Heading into the Memorial Day weekend, Republicans killed a bipartisan commission to investigate the January 6th attack on our Capitol. It was a gut punch to our democracy. It died by a vote of 54 in favor to 35 votes against. Yeah, you heard that right. Having a clear majority did not matter. Despite six Republican senators, Cassidy, Collins, Murkowski, Portman, Romney, and Sass, joining with the Democrats. 11 senators didn't even bother to show up for the vote. And of these, Democrats Kristen Sinema, Patty Murray, and Republican Pat Toomey say they would have voted for the commission. Even still, it would have failed with 57 votes for it and 35 votes against. That's a sign that something's deeply wrong with our democracy. Now remember, the dictionary definition of democracy is government by the people, especially rule of the majority. But we're experiencing a sustained assault on those ideas. Majority rule is increasingly undermined by the Electoral College and partisan gerrymandering, as well as voting in restrictions being jammed through Republican legislatures. In Congress, we become numb to bills that command clear majority support being blocked by a minority of senators. And the filibuster is almost always the murder weapon when it comes to killing these ideas, just as it was with the January 6th Commission. Even centrist Senator Joe Manchin came to the realization that Republicans were not negotiating in good faith, telling reporters, I'm very disappointed that politics has trumped, literally and figuratively, the good of the country. Republicans backing the big lie, the Sedition Caucus, seem to hate Democrats more than they love our democracy. So what can we do? Well, listen to the co-author of How Democracies Die on Reliable Sources. Democracy requires constant mending. And so we can't just simply stand still and assume that democracy is a machine that runs of itself. Now, Joe Manchin opposes ending the filibuster, but this latest insult makes the case that it's time to mend it, if not end it. Because the filibuster isn't some grand tradition. This graph shows how the filibuster has been abused in recent years. It used to be really rare. Then the talking filibuster was replaced with the silent hold in the mid-70s, which, combined with hyperpartisanship, has resulted in off-the-rails obstruction. The filibuster may actually be hurting bipartisanship instead of helping it. So here's a common sense reform. Require 41 votes to sustain a filibuster rather than requiring 60 votes to overcome it. Put the pressure on the obstructionists rather than the senators trying to solve problems across partisan lines. Now, this idea, first proposed by congressional scholar Norm Ornstein and former Senator Al Franken, still provides plenty of protection for principled objections. And it would have allowed a vote on the bipartisan January 6th commission to go forward. Republicans want to stop talking about the insurrectionist attack on our capital. But the sustained attack on our democracy demands a response, especially when voting rights are under assault and political violence is increasingly invoked. Not just by insurrectionists or Matt Gates talking about Second Amendment solutions or Michael Flynn appearing to endorse a military coup. The problem's more pervasive. A new PRI survey shows that 28% of Republicans believe that, quote, true American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save our country. So let's talk about true American patriots, given that we just marked Memorial Day. The fallen soldiers we honor did not die for any one political party. They died for our democracy. And the least we can do to honor their sacrifice is to hand our democracy to the next generation stronger, not weaker, than it was handed to us. And that's your reality check.